increase in the amount of attention these new therapies are receiving. And they're called peptides. Peptides are molecules that are made up of amino acids. There are different types of peptides, such as dipeptides, which contain two amino acids, tripeptides, which contain three amino acids, and so on. You get the idea. And so depending on how many amino acids are chained together, we have a peptide that contains that many amino acids. And when a peptide chain exceeds 50 amino acids, then it's called a protein. So essentially, the main difference between a peptide and a protein is the number of amino acids that they have. There are more than 7,000 peptides that have been identified. So probably there's a lot more out there that we're yet to discover. But since there's plenty of them that exist in our bodies, we can kind of infer that they all have unique action. And that's true. They have these peptides, they have a lot of different roles in how they act. Some of these peptides, they act as signaling molecules. And signaling molecules, they transmit information within and between the cells. These signaling peptides, they're also known as peptide hormones. And they play crucial roles in regulating various physiological processes, which include growth, metabolism, and immune responses. Now, even though there are thousands of peptides that we yet know, we are essentially interested in a few of them that seems to have quite a wide range of health benefits when we use them. We need to understand that not every peptide is going to give you health benefits, or not every peptide is gonna be suitable for anyone. But there are some peptides that we seem to make less of as we age, or we simply cannot efficiently utilize certain metabolic pathways when these peptides are scarce in our bodies. So these are the ones that scientists are currently focusing on from an anti-aging as well as healing perspective. Now, the purpose of this video is to talk about some useful peptides that appear to have a lot of positive effects on a number of organ systems, and essentially to provide some literature so you can kind of um, read up on your own on the things that will um, grab your attention from this video. When it comes to making these videos, I like to provide the literature and scientific references so that the information given in these videos, it just doesn't feel as if I'm advertising myself or my services or any products that I'm not even associated with. It should just be distilled scientific facts because that's our role as doctors. We should keep up to date with the science so we distill and convey the important information, the relevant information, the information that actually works for us to our patients. Okay, so first of all, I wanna talk about an important gland called the thymus gland. The thymus gland is a rather large gland when we're newborns, and it kinda of shrinks in size as we get older. In fact, Around the age of 10, the thymus glands, peptide, and protein secretions are at its peak. And they start to decline afterwards. So essentially, we're still teenagers when we start to lose the thymus glands function. When we get to 30s and 40s, the important peptides that are secreted by the thymus gland are no longer in abundance. The thymus glands secretes peptides called thymosin alpha-1 
and thymus and beta-4. These two peptides are quite important in their function. First of all, let's begin with thymus and alpha-1, which is a peptide that plays a crucial role in regulating the immune system. It enhances the activity of certain immune cells, such as T cells, and it helps modulate the immune response. This peptide has been investigated for its potential therapeutic use in various immune-related disorders. And these disorders include infectious diseases, um, cancers, autoimmune conditions, you name it. It's been shown to contribute to the immune system balance and our response to pathogens or abnormal cells in general. Now, hold on to your seats because even though you, you may have never heard of it before, this peptide is a peptide that's used in over 35 countries as a treatment for patients who have immunosuppression problems. And these are especially patients with hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, and certain cancers. And it is also used in psoriatic arthritis as well as chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, all of the literature can be found in the video description page. Now, another peptide secreted by this gland is called thymosin beta-4. And this, again, is a multifunctional peptide that plays a key role in cell migration, wound healing, and tissue repair. It's naturally found in higher concentrations in platelets, wound fluid, and other tissues involved in the healing process. Thymus and beta-4 promotes the formation of new blood vessels, it modulates inflammation, and contributes to tissue regeneration and repair. There have been studies in animals and studies in mice show that it can extend the lifespan of mice by up to 20% and it can reduce the tumor load in a number of cancers by up to 2.8 fold. That's, that's a huge number. So as we get older, and by older, I mean after we've passed our teenage years, we simply don't have enough of these peptides to help us with our immunity. So rather than having a thymus gland implantation, we can simply use these peptides and turn back the clock. The science is there. The evidence is there. These two peptides don't just give you a better immunity in everyday conditions like the common cold or the flu, the season of flu, but they also give you the ability to fight with chronic infections and other chronic conditions when you're older. Okay, and another gland that's quite important from an age perspective is the pineal gland. This tiny gland is a small endocrine gland in the brain and it produces melatonin. You've heard of it before. This is a hormone that regulates sleep-wake cycles and influences the circadian rhythm. This gland responds to light and darkness with increased melatonin production in the absence of light, which signals to the body that it's time to sleep. Besides in its, its role in sleep regulation, the pineal gland has been associated with other functions, and these functions include influencing reproductive hormones and potentially playing a role in the body's overall biological clock. The pineal gland also ages quite quickly as it calcifies. When you look at a 30-year-old person's pineal gland, you'll see quite a lot of quite extensive calcifications. And imagine how that looks like when you're 70 or 80 years old. So essentially, 
the pineal gland does not effectively regulate your circadian rhythm or certain other hormones as you age. One key peptide called epitalon helps improve the production of melatonin by the pineal gland. So you're not just replacing the melatonin itself, you're generating your body's own ability to produce what it needs. Epitalon regulates serotonin and melatonin. But apart from this, it has a very important function such as increasing telomerase activity. Telomerase is the enzyme that's responsible for maintaining the length of our telomeres. Telomeres are the small caps of repetitive DNA sequences at the end of our chromosomes. With each cell division, they get shorter and shorter and shorter, and they eventually, they don't permit further division of cells. By increasing telomerase activity, epitalon keeps the telomere length longer. What this means is you simply live longer. Existing studies on both animals and humans have concluded that it significantly reduces the effects of aging. Animal studies show that it increases the lifespan on mice and dogs. But of course, human lifespan is considerably longer than mice and dogs. So to have a meaningful data on how, how much it potentially increases our lifespan we would probably need to wait for another 50 to 60 years so that we can see some uh, meaningful data, meaningful information, and so we can um, have a better conclusion. But a three-year study on 79 patients with cardiovascular disease, a six-month cycle of epitalon, showed that patients receiving epitalon as opposed to placebo had a cardiovascular age that was nine years younger on average. And these were patients with cardiovascular problems to begin with. And there are many other studies that show benefits in dementia group of disorders, such as Alzheimer's disease. So it's very, very exciting times for anti-aging medicine, to say the least. I personally use thymosin alpha-1 thymosin beta-4, and epitalon on myself, as well as my family, as well as some of my patients, because they do help. And I do like the way I feel, my energy levels, my patient give me the same feedback as well. So these are peptides that actually help you age in a slower motion, if you will. Another important peptide that some scientists describe as a keychain with multiple keys on it is the body protective compound, BPC-157. The reason why it's described like that, it kind of opens up a lot of doors because the more it's being studied, the more applications and benefits of BPC-157 are being found. It's currently used in orthopedic injuries as it increases healing times. It's also used in gastrointestinal issues such as IBS, Crohn's disease, um, ulcerative colitis, uh, gastritis, and um, many, many types of ulcers. BPC-157 is known with its healing abilities. It significantly increases tissue healing times in muscle, tendon, or ligament injuries. That's why it's very popular among athletes and gym enthusiasts. So be careful because the FDA has banned its use in competitive sports because it simply gives a competitive advantage to its users. They heal better, their muscles heal better. So it is not to be used by professional athletes. BPC-157, it stimulates new blood vessel formation, reduces the amount of inflammation, simply increases your healing times. And again, as we get older, our systems may not work perfectly. So when you suffer from an injury, the pro-inflammatory 
and post-inflammatory cytokines may not behave optimally. They may not be able to position themselves optimally. So you may have delayed wound healing as a result. Compare a 15-year-old to a 70-year-old in terms of orthopedic injuries, and you'll understand what I'm saying. So patients with injuries, rheumatological conditions such as arthritis, patients with peptic ulcers, gastritis, acid reflux disease can greatly benefit from BPC-157. And as we have more and more research into the gut-brain axis, because these two are quite interrelated, we're discovering more healing properties of this peptide in traumatic brain injuries, stroke, and other neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease even. Okay, so that's some of the important peptides in a nutshell. There are some other very important peptides that we'll continue exploring, we'll continue discussing, but that's for another video. Thank you.